Hello, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Tweet, where I explain to you some of the real and not so real things going on behind the scenes uh, for each of these jokes. Here's the latest one I wanted to go through. Me, what did you do at school? Nine-year-old, math. Me, what kind of math? Nine, you wouldn't understand. Somebody knows I'm an English major. So I really am an English major, and I hate math. Always have, always will. And it was really one of my most disappointing discoveries about having kids that when your kids go back to school, you go back to school too. Like their problems become my problems. Like not all the way, I'm not a helicopter parent. I'm pretty much a bare minimum parent, but math enters my home, which is definitely a no math zone. Math has been forbidden here for forever. If you walk through the door with a calculator, that calculator will burst into flames. Now I did marry a chemist. She does that STEM stuff, but mostly I don't think there's a whole lot of math going on in what she does day to day. And for me, I don't use any math beyond basic addition. The, the calculus teacher, algebra teacher, everybody else who promised me that math would be important, they all lied. In fact, I picked a college specifically so I wouldn't have to take math. You can tell it's a quality institution if they don't require any actual hard classes to go with your English degree, and then I didn't read the books for that English degree. So yeah, my entire life is a fraud, but I think we were pretty well all aware of that. So my daughter is going through this right now, and she takes after her mom. My nine-year-old loves math, loves science. They're doing that, uh, the Common Core stuff, although we're in Indiana. They don't call it Common Core anymore. They, they branch it into something else, like Common Core is too divisive and controversial. We're going to call it something different that's exactly the same thing. And then they like branch it out a little bit so it has like a different set of work of books just to make everything confusing. So we have all the bad stuff from Common Core plus a little bit more confusion piled on top of that. We really, we really managed to, uh, to not come out with the best possible solution on that one. And then you add to that equation me, who doesn't understand math. Uh, all of last year, my eight-year-old would come to me like, will you double check these things? It's like, okay, I can do basic math. That's the level you're still at back when you were in third grade. But they don't want like just the basic math. There's like number lines and I don't even know what they, they, there's a lot of drawing that goes on with math now that they, we did not draw in math back when I was a kid. We just, we just solved problems. There was a problem and you solved it, which seemed like a very good way to go through life. And eventually the problems go, got so hard that you couldn't solve them. And you realized that solving them was stupid. And that's when you become an English major. And that's really the key to enlightenment or to taking the easy way out, depending on how you want to look at that. So this is going to be a constant struggle in my house. Now my uh, my, my kid oldest is, is moving into fourth grade and the math is only getting harder. There will be a day soon where she comes home with math and I legitimately will not understand that. I hope I don't hit the wall in fourth grade. I really hope I can make it beyond that point, but there's no guarantees, especially if I have to do the math in my head. If I have to do the math in my head, all bets are off. I'm probably gonna go um quite a bit and then try to stall until I can slip away and use the calculator on my phone. Because why do we even have calculators on our phones if we're not going to, lose, to use it? I mean, basically, learning to do math in your head is like a survival strategy in case you're stranded in the woods and like a bear captures you and says they'll only free you if you can solve these basic algebra problems. Like what, when else are you going to need to solve these things without the assistance of, of a calculator other than a wildlife hostage scenario? I mean, at this point, even the worst places on earth get like 4G cell coverage. So our phones are going to be there and they're listening to everything we say anyway. They're, they're basing ads on what we want. Why not just let them solve our problems too? As they create a whole separate set of problems, let's just let them do our math for us. In fact, math class should really just be a bunch of phones sitting on desks while the kids go out and like play at recess and get some exercise. And then we'll train our phones to be better. Our kids will be healthier. Everybody will be happier. And then I won't have to help my kid with math homework. And that's really the important part, especially since I'm really not helping her with math homework. I'm just double checking what she did and then realizing that she's probably right and trying to figure out why I'm wrong. And everybody upstairs is crying. It's a normal weeknight, probably crying because of math. All right. Thank you for joining me for this episode of Behind the Tweet. Please hit that subscribe button. I am going to try to keep putting out a video every day or almost every day. Catch you later.